Did I know where to find you? Yes. Well, I asked the right questions. I heard you were doing mission work in this part of the country. And I managed to have business with the Roberts family. It's good to see you, Heath. <laughs> it's wonderful, really. Your uh, sister Jacob now. Sister Jacob, that's a, that's a funny name for a girl. <laughs> so I've always thought it was a fine old biblical name. Of course, if you don't like Jacob, you have to take that up with Isaac. Of course, if you don't like Isaac, you have to take it up with Abraham. And if you don't, it gets very complicated after that. Hello, Mr. Roberts. Who are you chasing? Oh, oh, we're cut it up. Come on now. What was that for? No need to spell it out to you, Barkley. You know what that's for. I ought to use a gun on you. Homer, let's keep it legal the way we agreed. You're under arrest. For what? For assaulting my daughter. Listening to me? Listening to you? How can I help it? I'm entitled to face that girl and you know it. I heard you. The first four or five times. Well, then why hasn't she been brought here? Are you serious? Carla Roberts, brought from her father's house to face a wild-eyed rooster like you? Uh-huh. You got a lot to learn, friend. You'll have a chance to face Carla at your trial. And if this is some kind of a joke, I'll laugh some other time. Mr. Barkley, you are now in Robertsville. You are not back in Stockton with your family to take charge of things for you. Something you just have to get used to. Now, is there anything else? I want to send a telegram. Get your piece of paper. No, I, I don't mean to say that Heath was ever saintly. Such a lie might bring the roof down on our heads. <laughs> but it, he was wild. He was he was unruly and. Like so many of the others, he, he was even willful at times. Thank you. But he was, um, he, he was... <clears throat> this is very difficult to say, sister. Yes, sister. He was never disrespectful in the way that they're trying to suggest. How long has it been since you last saw him? Four years. Four years? Oh, my. That's almost forever when you're young. Men change, you know. The world and the people in it, our poor selves included, are so rarely what we once hoped we might be. Yes, I, I understand that. But just the same, I, I don't believe that Carla Roberts is telling the truth. And I don't mean that's something that I can prove, but I mean, I just know it. I feel it. That just isn't something that Heath would do. Let's try to be realistic. 
How well did you know this young man? Well enough to have married him if I hadn't chosen to become a nun. I see. Sister, you'd have to have known Heath to, to understand. I mean, he, he, uh, he was wild and he was headstrong and he, and sometimes he felt like he belonged to no one. And, of course, those were the times when he, he was most lost. But he, he was always gentle and almost unspeakably brave. Are you sure he couldn't have done this? Oh, yes, sister. I'm absolutely sure he couldn't have done it. Please, may I have your permission to go see him in the jail tomorrow? Do you think it's wise? <laughs> well, no, I'm not sure of that at all, but under the present situation with his family, a two or three day journey away, I, I think someone should be there with him. All right. Take Sister Martha with you. Thank you. Sister, what can I do for you? I'd like to see Mr. Barclay, please. Oh. Well, if you're going to pray for this young fellow, it might be a good idea to get an early start. Uh, what do you have in the basket? Some lunch. We do that frequently for prisoners, you know. Well, I wasn't looking for an argument. Just ten minutes now, please, sister. Thank you. Hello, Sarah. Hello, Heath. I might have known you'd come. I would not. Would you sit down? Thank you. Bad luck. First of all, I want you to know that what she said wasn't true. I was a guest at the Roberts house, and I talked to her, but that was all. I don't know why she would say something like that, except... Sarah, do you know Carla Roberts? Uh, yeah, I've seen her in town a few times. Would you say there was something, well, strange about her? I think that we're all strange sometimes. Well, yesterday, I rode out to the stables to look at some horses I came to buy. And don't ask me how she got there, or what she was doing there, but there was Carla. She, uh, she asked me to look at some saddles in the tack room. And I said, yeah, I'd look at the saddle. And she followed me inside. Well, we were alone, and she wasn't exactly dressed to go knocking around a barn. Sarah, it's not easy for me to describe how she acted. Well, I mean, it's not something that you'd want to tell a nun. Well, if anything, she came after me. And I may not have been as polite as I should have been, but well, I got out of there. The next thing I knew, her father showed up at the mission with the sheriff. Do you believe me, Sarah? You don't have to persuade me, Heath. I believed you before you began. Thank you. Does your family know that you've been arrested? Well, I sent them a telegram, and I'm sure they know by now. My brother Jared, he's a lawyer. He's one of the best there is. He should get this whole thing cleared right up. I brought you something. Here. There's some um, coffee and sandwiches and pickles and oh, some of uh, Sister Benedict's angel food cake without the halos. Oh, you shouldn't have done that. <laughs> oh, it's nothing special. It looks good. Sure you won't have some? No, thank you. Actually, we made that uh, same lunch for a man that they hanged two weeks ago. 
Poor fellow. Wasn't much for praying. Sure had a good appetite. <laughs> I'm serious. He... <laughs> really, it's awful when you think about it. He ate every speck. <laughs> really? <laughs> Heaven forgive me for making such a morbid joke. Are <laughs> they hungry? <laughs> I'm glad you came, Sarah. <laughs> I'll come again if it's all right. Well, I'd be mighty disappointed if you don't. <laughs> Goodbye. Well, what was so funny? I don't think I could begin to explain to Sheriff. <laughs> I'm not sure I understand it myself. I do for you? I'd like to speak to Carla, please. Why do you want to talk to her? I'm a friend of Heath Barclay's. I've known him for many years. You, a nun? Well, I wasn't a nun when I knew him. I'll bet you weren't. Mr. Roberts, I would like to speak to Carla because I believe that, well, at least there's been a misunderstanding. Sister Jacob, why don't you go back to Sister Benedict? You remind her and yourself that your mission's on my property. And that it's there by my permission alone. I can't see what harm can come from my talking to Carla. She's up in her room and she's not feeling well. Oh, I'm sorry. Perhaps I could come back later. That won't be necessary. Mr. Roberts, Heath Barkley is not the kind of man who could harm your daughter. Isn't he? We'll see what a jury thinks tomorrow. Tomorrow? The trial is tomorrow? That's right. But his family can't possibly be here by then. At 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, Judge Jonah Bailey presiding. May God forgive you. What's the matter with you? Nothing, Homer. Just hope you're not pressing this thing too fast. You don't think my daughter's good name is worth it? Or that I'm entitled to some satisfaction from that stinking barnyard rooster who came to my home as a guest? All I'm trying to say, Homer, is that it might be a good idea not to get too excited. Well, for Carla's sake, even. But Carla is a, a very high-strung girl. Isn't it possible that young Barkley didn't intend all those things that she might have well, imagined? What are you trying to say? Not a thing, Homer. I'm just making a suggestion. There was that other incident I recall some years back. That young fella from Deadlock. That's enough! Whatever you say, Homer. It's better. I'd like to see the right man for the right job, Herb. That badge looks fine on you, Herb. Mm-hmm. I know, Homer. I know. It's all right, dear. They've all gone. Oh, Papa. I'd never manage without you. What did the sister want? Oh, some nonsense or other. It's not worth talking about. It was the young one, wasn't it? Yes, it was the young nun. Poor thing. What did you say? Poor thing. I said, poor girl. I see her watching me all the time, and, well, I can't help wondering what she may be imagining. They lead strange lives, don't they? You're trembling. I know. It's thinking about tomorrow, Papa. All those people in the courtroom and, and having to look at him. Carla. Yes, Papa. That, that thing with Barclay and you, that 
It was just the way you told me, wasn't it? You, Papa? You don't believe me. I believe you. I believe you. I, well, I, I, what I meant was that I, I just wanted to help. Forgive me. I never doubted you for a minute. I want you to know that. You want him punished, don't you? Oh, yes, Papa. I want him punished. I want that more than anything in the world. Sorry, sister, I didn't intend to take so long. That's all right. I understand. I went for a long walk. I was hoping I could think of some solution to this. I can't believe that they're going to hold Heath's trial tomorrow. Sister, do you think that he has any chance at all? With Judge Bailey presiding over a hand-picked jury? I'm afraid that Pontius Pilate, with a sword at his throat, couldn't serve the truth more wretchedly. They could take ten years of his life. I know. But I fear that this time, sister, there is no solution. Nor any remedy you can rely on. Except prayer. I wonder... What, sister? Heaven forgive me, I don't know yet. I wish I knew how to advise you. Suppose we have some tea. Oh, Lord Jesus, help me. Left to myself, I'm apt to be such a fool. talk to you. Carla, come back. Carla. What's all the commotion? Your star witness was just gaping at me from the street. Carla? Oh, sure, if you heard me, I wasn't whispering her name. You just never learn, do you? Learn what? To sit here and wait for a rigged up trial? There's nothing rigged up about it. Why don't you just relax? You're gonna have to be in that courtroom the first thing in the morning. Save your breath for the witness stand. Well, sister, you keep bringing my prisoner food every few hours. I'm afraid he's going to get too fat for his cell. Yes, that's a possibility, isn't it, Charlie? Be careful with that thing. No, I, I'm not doing this to be amusing. Would you drop your gun belt, please? Go on, you heard me, Sheriff. Sir, so are you sure you want to do this? Uh-huh. If you do, you're out of your mind. Sister, I'm warning you, you... Would you just get in the cell, please? Would you lock it, Heath? Your meals are getting better. You'll regret this, both of you. Where'd you get the rig? Oh, in the livery stable. I hope you can pay for it when we get back. McAdoo! Somebody out there get McAdoo! Get him in here, fast! Jailbreak! Jailbreak! Now, no smart remarks, McAdoo, from you or anybody else. Barkley? Barkley, your tin badger was that nun. Like a Halloween witch with a gun in her hand. 
Sister Jacob? Pearl? So I said it was, didn't I? You men are hereby deputized. Don't you think we ought to tell Mr. Roberts? Well, let's hope we don't have to tell Mr. Roberts. Anyway, we haven't got time now. dry goods store. I saw him escape with that nun. She was in the carriage with him. Sister Jacob? Well, where was the sheriff? He was locked in the jail, someone said. I heard him shout until the men got there. Oh, Papa. I'm so scared. Oh, come on, Carla. There's nothing to be frightened of. Oh, I'm ashamed of being so scared, Papa, but I keep remembering what he tried to do. I can't help it. What if he comes here? He's going to be too busy running for his life. I'm going to hunt him down like a, like an animal. And that young nun, I'm going to put her in jail where she belongs. Think. I think we're getting no place fast. Too much country to cover. I'm going to go back and organize some more searching parties. You fellows go ahead on your own. You can tell Mr. Roberts? Well, what else can I do? You just be glad you're not me. Why are we stopped? Rest the horse. Can't exactly say we lost him. Our problem is that we just haven't been able to find him. I got McAdoo. I don't and... want any of your smart remarks. I want Heath Barkley in that courtroom at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Either that or his dead body stretched out on the street for everyone to see. We'll have him there for you, Homer, if it's possible. You're gonna make it possible. Look, Homer, you can't hide a team of horses and a rig and a nun in full regalia like a, a, a silver dollar. It's dark out there. We've got a lot of country to cover. I want to have at least a half a dozen searching parties at work by daybreak. That's the only thing I know what to do. Well, then stop your talking. Organize your search parties. Here, I brought these men. Deputize them, use them as you need them. I'll pay their wages. You men are hereby deputized. I expect to use all of you, maybe a dozen more in groups of three and four. I'll let you know where I want you stationed at dawn. Well, you men can go now. We'll see you at daybreak. You warmer? Much warmer, thank you. Don't you think we should move on? Well, the horse can use the rest. So can you. Sarah, why are you taking this chance? I think that should be perfectly obvious. So you don't have to face Mr. Roberts' own judge and jury. I'll have you railroaded off to jail before your family can even get to Robertsville. You'll be safe at Paco's until they get here. 
But don't you realize they could put you in jail for helping a prisoner escape? Well, it was a matter of conscience. I hope. What do you mean, you hope? Well, it's, uh, it's often difficult looking back to be certain of any motive, important or petty. Whether the thing that you did is really what you ought to have done, or is it simply just what you wanted to do? Being honest about those things is really what conscience is all about, I guess. You're not like anybody in the whole world, are you, sir? That could be a comfort to many. <laughs> My superiors in particular. Let's talk about you. Me? Yes, you. Last time I saw you, you were driving a stage. What happened after that? Well, I guess you might say things just went along for a while. Had some lumber and mining jobs. Did more than my share of herding cattle. Nothing exciting. Nothing for the history books. Main thing is I... I found a family. And learned how to belong. I guess you might say that was the biggest. The biggest and the best. I'm so glad for you, Heath. You could have been a part of it, sir. Ah, uh, that horse must be rested now. We better get started. Shh. Just a coyote. Oh. Not as big as the sheriff, but better looking. <laughs> well, nothing like an unloaded coat for emergencies. Is this standard equipment for nuns? Well, sure, you don't think I could have used that on the sheriff if it was loaded, do you? I suppose not. We have a long way to go. We better get going, huh? Pete, <laughs> what is it? It could only happen to me. This is all right? Oh, yes, I know, Paco. Maybe he doesn't want to get mixed up with fugitives like us. This is Mission Country Heath. The sisters have worked here for 70 years. Hello? Anybody? Ah, there Sister. He is. Hello, Bienvenido. Paco. This is my friend, Mr. Barkley. He wants to stay here a few days. Bienvenido, senor. My house is your house. Thank you, Paco. That's very generous. But I think you should know that the sheriff is after me. And so we will hope he does not find you, senor. Please, sit. Sit down, sister. And let me fix you something to eat. Thanks, sir. Well, let me put it this way, ma'am. If you do know where that young nun and Barkley are hiding out, and you're not telling me, well, you can just pack your mule and be off my property by this time tomorrow. I have no knowledge of Sister Jacob's whereabouts. But you do know that she's responsible for a jailbreak, don't you? And she'll be tried as a criminal, sent to prison just the same as him. Oh, God forbid such a thing, Mr. Roberts. But what kind of a person is she? Why would she run off with the likes of him? Well, answer me, ma'am. I am not prepared to answer you at the moment, Mr. Roberts. All I can say concerning Sister Jacob is that in the years I've known her as a postulant, a novice, and a duly professed nun, there has been no breach of discipline. She's been all that we might have asked. Well, you can be telling all that to a warden pretty soon. Don't you 
break it? No, I dropped a few beads. I manage to do that about once a month. Think your family will be arriving tomorrow? Well, if they caught that early train to deadlock, and got a fast team. Otherwise, it'll be day after tomorrow. Mm. Paco could find out for you. That'd be a help. What do you see there? I was just thinking about things that probably would be better to forget. Like that picnic we never went on. Picnic? Four years ago, we had a date to go on a picnic. That was the summer you left. You do remember, don't you? Of course I remember. But we agreed that Valentine's Day is over for us. Well, I don't think it'll ever be over for me. Four years ago, I was in love with you. Stop it, Heath. And with all due respect to your vows and conscience, it still hasn't changed for me. I'm sorry. I hope so. In the future, let's be very careful that you keep these aberrations, let's say, to yourself. Heath, I want to make something very plain to you. I've dedicated myself to God's business. That's what I chose. That's what I want. It doesn't leave a gap to be filled. My only regret is that sometime I attend his business poorly. Or not as well as I'm able. Heath, I'm very fond of you. I'm not offended. That would be foolish. This fire was built some hours ago. Hey, Otto? What? Look at this. Three beads on a chain. What do you make of it? Well, it looks like part of a, whatchamacallit, a, a rosary. It's got to belong to that nun. If we look hard enough, we'll find buggy tracks. You better ride back to town, Combs. The way old man Roberts and Fogarty been itching, they'll want to know about this right away. All right. You two, come with me. Mm. You're at Paco's now. I'm not complaining. They smell good. Well, thank you. They're almost done. Do you want to go outside and get Paco? Well, he'll be right back. He just went to get some water. Mm. Say, is there anything you nuns can't do? Oh, I can name about a thousand things, but we don't have time. Hey, would you get me those plates over there, please? Mm-hmm. Senor Heath! Senor Heath! Sister! What is it, Paco? Three name come. God forgive me if I blundered you into this. I'm sorry. It's not your fault, Sarah.
I'm doing my best. Look at that map. Go on, look at it. I've got men everywhere. Yeah, one thing about you, Fogarty, you never run out of excuses. Look, Homer, what do you want from all me? All right, Homer, what's this all about? Where's he? If I knew where he was, I'd have him roped like a calf. Or better yet, I'd have a rope around his neck. What are you talking about? I'll tell you what I'm talking about. Your brother escaped from this jail two days ago. Now he's running for help with some deluded nun because he didn't have the guts to stand for trial. What's he supposed to have done? He was arrested for attempted rape. I don't believe it. There must be some mistake. Now, first mistake was made by me, letting that young whelp stay in my house. Victoria, I thought our family were friends. If you did, you're doing your best to change that. I'm doing my best to tell you that the girl was my daughter. You'll believe it when we catch up with him. You see him down on his knees to plead for mercy. I'd like to talk to your daughter. Oh, no, I'm not going to let you torment her, too, or invent some lies you to harm You know her. better than that. Don't get on your high horse with me, Victoria. Now you listen to me, Roberts, and I'm speaking as my brother's attorney. Before you choke on that bone of righteousness, suppose you tell me why you think Heath broke out of jail. Because he was guilty, of course, and he wouldn't stay in trial. And when is this trial scheduled to be held? It was scheduled for yesterday morning. Yes. Well, we only got the telegraph two days ago. Who was supposed to be here to represent him? Now, you listen to me, Barclay. This is my town. Your brother forgot it. You'd be wise to remember it. Your town. You were going to bring my brother to trial within 24 hours with a bootlicking judge and a hand-picked jury? Before we were able to get here? Why, Homer? Why? What were you afraid of? Mr. Roberts, I think we picked our trail up this time. Why? About a mile west of Bradley Forks. I found this at a place where they stopped. Must have been the nuns. Couldn't possibly be anybody else's. Let's go. What are we waiting for? All right, let's Sarah, go. are you going to arrest my son or murder him at Homer Roberts' request? I'm going to do my job, ma'am. And what is that job, Sheriff? To uphold the law of this town or the sacred privileges of one individual? I don't like the way you're talking. I didn't say it to please you, Sheriff. And now I give you fair warning. I'm going to go out and find Heath. And if you're bent on murder, you're going to have to kill us both. Hold it, Marshley. Don't make it any worse, Sheriff. I'm not going to have him interfering with the law. What law, Sheriff? Hold it, Marshley. Throw him in his brother's cell. Come on. Head out. Just leave him sweat there for a while. 
He ain't going anywhere. Hello, Carla. I'm Victoria Barclay. I'm sure you must remember me. I used to come here when you were much younger, of course. I, I knew your mother quite well. I don't have to talk to you. I don't have to let you in the house. No, I suppose not. But I would like to know what happened. I already told my father and the sheriff. I don't have to tell anyone else. Carla, they've located Heath. Now, if there's been some misunderstanding... There's been no misunderstanding. Are you sure? They could kill my son, you know. It's not my fault what happens. He brought it on himself. I see. Strange, I've never known Heath to do anything like this. He... Well, he must have been terribly attracted to you. Wasn't he? I said I don't want to talk about it. And I don't have to. Was he in love with you? What do you think? Well, I don't know. You are very attractive. Didn't he say so? You're making fun of me. Oh, no, no, Carla. Why would I do anything like that? Because you think you're so much. It's the same as he thinks he's so much. All right, Carla, what really happened? I don't like you, Mrs. Barkley. Now, you leave me alone. I don't intend to. I want the truth. Everybody else believes me. Everybody but you and that nun. Oh, yes, the nun. Now, who is she? Tell me about her. I don't know. Just a nun from the mission on our property. Probably Heath style. Isn't that a strange thing to say about a nun? I don't know. Stop it or leave me alone. No, no, we can't stop now. Not until we know what's happened. Not until we know the truth. Not the things you dreamed about or wished would happen. Your father is out there now with men ready to kill my son because you lied about what happened. Why should I lie? I've got plenty of bows. You should see them all come courting. I don't need Heath. He was rude. I told him to stop. He became vicious. He, he deserves whatever he gets. Does he, Carla? Does he? And will you be able to live with yourself afterwards? He could have cared about me some. He could have tried. Is that what you wanted? Oh, I didn't mean it that way. You're making me say things I don't want to say. And when he showed you he didn't care, isn't that when you lied to your father? Because you did lie, didn't you? It hurt so much not to have Heath's attention, you had to lie! I don't know. I don't know. It's all so confused. You and Papa. Papa. Maybe he thinks I should be a nun. Will you help me? Give up, Barkley! You don't have a chance! And we've got him pinned down. Go on in and get him. I'd just as soon have him dead as alive. Won't be that easy to get a clean shot at him. No sense rushing things, getting our own men killed. I'll give a hundred dollars for every bullet that's put in Barkley's hide.
in a court you can't buy off. Now, Carla just confessed to me she was lying. Nothing happened with Heath. You're lying now. You know that's not true. Carla is sick, Homer. She needs your help. You've known about it for years, but you've been trying to hide it from yourself. It's not like she says. Tell the men to keep firing. Sheriff, you talk to Carla. She'll tell you the truth. You'd say anything to help him? I'm sorry, Homer. This is as far as I go. I can't help you try to run a bluff any longer. Not at the cost of that boy's life. Combs! Come on over there. Hold your fire. You can go in now, ma'am. Hey! I'm all right. Thank God. The funny thing. Must be the company I've been keeping lately. I had the same thought myself. I don't think we'll have any further problems with Mr. Roberts. Poor man. He was here this morning. Even talked to building us a new school. Seems he had a very fruitful talk with uh, you gentlemen about things in general, and that subject in particular. I don't know which of you to thank more. Well, why not try me, sister, since I'm the more saintly member of the family? As a matter of fact, it's my example that we're all hoping Heath will follow. That's entirely true, sister. Uh, this good man trips over his halo nearly twice a day. <laughs> yes, well, uh, maybe we better find Mother and get started. Yes. Goodbye, sister. Goodbye. Goodbye, sister. Goodbye. God bless you. <laughs> you planning another jailbreak? Oh, for heavens, no. <laughs> we were just talking. She's really something. No argument for me. If you ever get up near Stockton, I expect you to look in on us. If it's at all possible. Sister, I'm convinced that nothing is impossible for you. Uh, Heath, I'm afraid that train won't wait. Sister? Goodbye. Goodbye, Sarah. Goodbye, Heath. You must have loved him very much at one time, didn't you? Yes, I did. What makes you think I ever stopped?
to meet the brute who did this. but you're on private property. Well, am I now? Uh -huh. So who are you and what do you think you're doing here? Well, now, it's a private property. I never could believe the dear God intended for men to cut up this beautiful earth into parcels for themselves, holding in captivity all living creatures upon the same. So as to trespassing, and there's no such thing. And I go where my foot leads me, which is according to the wind at me back. Mm, all right, stand aside. That I am. A lunatic. They locked me away for protecting eagles. For as any sane man knows, a thing of air and freedom must be killed. Well, that thing of air and freedom has been killing our sheep and chickens. I don't know what road you came in on, mister, but you better find that road and get. Surely you not be keeping the poor creature. That's worse than killing it. Let it go. May he pick out your eyes. You got a horse? Horse? Just the rich who ride. A walking man is Patrick Madigan. Oh, tramp. Huh? From Canada to this beautiful valley, spoiled only by the presence of yourself. You walked all the way from Canada. There were times when it was necessary to swim. Git. Shall we have another go at it? You show your tail on uh, this property again, and I'm sure we will. Private devil, and the two of you in the cage you built for him. Take this. It's good prime beef. Come on, take it. Oh, Audra, I wonder what we're going to think of Brother Nick with a face like a lace curtain. Nick, the book says he's supposed to be blindfolded at first. The book. And it also says each time he takes food from you, just as he swallows it, you're supposed to give him a certain whistle. Ah, how about turkey in the straw? 
<laughs> oh, now, will you two clear out of here? I'm trying to tame this bird, and I'm not getting any help from you. You're not getting much help from the bird, either. What is it, Mac? Did you post a notice in Stockton that we want to hire a dynamiter? No, we didn't. Now, listen, Nick, you're going about this all wrong. Yes, we did. What do you mean, all wrong? Well, there's a fellow out there who claims to be our man. Well, in the first place, what you have to do is teach this bird how to read. What do you mean, advertise for a dynamiter? The mine, Sundown Hill. While well, your engineer friend's been poking around trying to make up his mind, I decided to go ahead and get a dynamiter. Do it my way. Now, Nick, you know you're never going to get the major to agree to that. Until we closed that mine, there was an accident for every pound of gold we took out of it. Now, we just don't need it. But it's there. So is the record. The record! Fifty-year-old record. They went at it their way. Where is he? Right outside. <laughs> Take over. <laughs> Bear a bit on the handle like a good lad. Glory be. I told you to. be my pleasure someday to open that hard head. Now it's business I'm on here. If you'll just send out your foreman. Holy angels. Is it you I've come to see? If you're a dynamiter, why didn't you say so out there? I was otherwise engaged. You're a pretty good dynamiter? I have that talent. Where have you worked? Oh, well, this is my brother Jared. He's a lawyer. Oh, a lawyer now. Would you care to hear an opinion of lawyers and judges? Not particularly. Just nice straight answers. Where have you worked? Any mining. Well, now, isn't that where I got my training? Digging English coal to warm English noses. Well, that's very interesting. But what would you do about rocks so rotten that a mine had to be closed? Oh, and what's your religion? And how do you vote? And uh, what's the fashion of your nether clothes? Now, is it a dynamiter you people want? I can sharpen a pencil with a stick of the stuff if my word's not good enough. Good day to you. No, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on. Jared, he's already here. Famous time. Uh, the least we can do is take him out to the mine, let him take a look at it, and then he can tell us what he thinks the chances are. All right, Nick, you do that. Then pay him for his time. All right, let's get out there. Well, I'll have a bite to eat first, if you've the good manners to offer it, and a drop to wash it down. And the shirt. For if I'm to dine, I'll not sit naked. And you might modify that master's tone in your voice. You've not hired a flunky. Hair bowls. Weak spots. The whole thing will come down. You just holler, won't you? You posted that morning? Here, when we open the tunnel. Uh, the knock of Flanagan's donkey. Back. Slowly now. And don't touch anything. Huh? Come on. So special about Flanagan's donkey. Well, he'd browse the edge of the cliffs each and every morning, heedless of the danger. And then one morning, the cliff top broke loose and tumbled into the sea, carrying all. But was Flanagan's fortunate animal there? No. Correct. He'd eaten thistles and choked to death only the day before. Lucky. few lads dying of the consumption. It would be a mirror of my childhood.
I've seen it. What do you say? A sensible thing to do? Leave it alone. Barkley! Barkley! Wilson! Barkley, where are you? Up here. I figure they dropped the whole inside of this hill, compact it, and then start again from scratch, open cut mining. Oh, the torment of the rich, to become richer. Ah, there we are. I told you we're here. Now, what's all this nonsense about a dynamiter? Patrick Madigan, Major Wilson, ex-British Corps of Engineers. Madigan, eh? If there's a pimple on my nose, would you be kind enough to tell me? Madigan. Army? Not yours. Oh, yes. Ireland. Belfast. Or Dublin. If it is, I've not committed it to memory. I understand from Jared this man appeared out of nowhere, as it were. Came in answer to my notice. References? Recommendations? What papers establishing that he may be indeed trusted with dynamite? Haven't you heard? It's become an Irish specialty. Major, when I hire a man, I'm the one that fires him. No one else. You don't need a dynamiter at all. You could recut these passages, square timber them. You said that'd be too expensive. And at best would only postpone a catastrophe. Nick, this hill is unstable. Then why not my idea? I know, too risky. He says it's not sensible. Oh, but did I say I'd not be willing to try? Well, now, you sure change your mind quick enough. Well, now, it's no more sensible than it was before, but... Sensible is for the man who means to die in bed. A series of charges, each setting off the other, would breach the walls, blow the overhead to dust, and down would come the whole interior, leaving not a space the size of an egg. What about the water? Well, now, that would be a problem for the engineer, but one that shouldn't be insolvable <laughs> with the application of a little ingenuity. It's getting a little stuffy in here. You're going to do it, with or without you. Very well. I shall return to the house and offer every sound reason for abandoning this mad project. And then offer to supervise it with a different dynamiter. Because if that chap is the man I believe him to be, your Mr. Patrick Madigan is a very violent man. And having him on your ranch would be like sheltering a time bomb. Kelly lay on his back, and O'Brien crawled to him in the dark, and felt for a sign of life. Oh, Kelly, he moaned. Kelly, my dear friend, I feel a wetness upon you. I'm just afraid I am to think of what it may be. Well, strike a match, whispers Kelly, and have a look. And O'Brien does, and Kelly asks, is it blood? Tell me the truth, O'Brien. Oh, blood it is, moans O'Brien. There's blood all over you, Kelly. Praise be, cries Kelly. I was afraid it was the whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, Madigan, what kind of country is that Ireland place? Well, it's a land of the Leprechauns and the Kellys and the O'Briens and the Blarney Stone. <laughs> but that's not all there is. Oh, it is a land for poets to tell about, not a fool like me. Oh, it is the smoke of peat. And it's the slow creak of carts along the road. And the little Connemara ponies. Sweet land it is, though often sad. Oh, come on now, we'll have none of that. None of that blasted funeral music. Alive she is! Alive is Ireland! And what an only to be free! and suddenly it was 8 o'clock. Well, how are you, Major? Well, I'm not sure. We were just discussing Mr. Madigan. Isn't he the most amazing man? If he's not talking, he's dancing. If it's not that, it's something else. He's like a runaway train. Well, I'm starving. I think I'll get something to eat. Don't forget to make the hood for that eagle, huh? First thing in the morning. Mm -hmm. 
Well, <clears throat> yes, I must say I'm not entirely surprised that Audra and seemingly everyone else around here is captivated by his charm. They're all charming. All the terrorists in the Society of Fenians. And responsible for sabotage, arson, and the brutal murders of good British soldiers. Oh, thank you. Yes, Mr. Madigan is quite efficient at dynamite. His bombing of Clark and Will Prison, the circumstances of his escape from England, devilish good demonstrations of that fact. But you, Mr. Madigan, is guilty of treason against the Crown. Has he been tried? He will be. Oh, well, maybe I misunderstood you. I thought I heard you say he was guilty. <laughs> well, perhaps that was a bit unfair, but he is a wanted man, Mr. Barclay. He's a rebel. You told me about his back. Surely that's proof enough. Proof? I'm sure he's been flogged. It's customary with these fellows, you know. No, I didn't know. Oh. It's the only kind of treatment a rebel understands, ma'am. Major, do you have any kind of official standing in this matter? No, but I am a British subject. And this man has committed crimes against the Crown. Ah, but that happened in your country, not here. But they are crimes. Seems to me that's a matter of opinion, Major, not fact. The law is a fact, Mr. Barclay, and breaking the law is a fact. Well, now, that's always highly debatable. You see, the fact is, Mr. Madigan is a political fugitive. He committed crimes in Great Britain, but they're not punishable in the United States. And so I've asked you to accommodate me. To, uh, shall we say, immobilize a, well, shall we say, a suspicious character until my government can arrange to have him returned for trial. We can't do that. But my dear lady... Major, the day I find a name on our payroll that is spotless, that will be someone who hasn't lived very long or very much. People are hired for what we want them to do, and all we ask is that they stay clean here and give us an honest day's work for their wages. Now, you say this man, Madigan, is wanted, and will we be good enough to move him a few steps closer to the rope? Well, we call that bounty hunting. And the answer is no. But I've described bombings to you, treason. Those fellows are rebels. Well, that depends on which side wins, doesn't it? We call ours patriots. Nick, your revolution took place a hundred years ago. It was a revolution. Let me say I... I understand your ideals. I rather admire them. But you see, the chap we're talking about is associated with riot, insurrection, property damage, and considerable bloodshed. And if my country wishes to try Mr. Madigan for his crimes, it will find a way to take him. Will it? It's a very old country, Mr. Barclay. And very experienced. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm sure that we're not going to let this affect our friendship in any way. Oh, I hope not. And that I may still look forward to supervising the work of the old mine. That's up to you. Thank you, my dear boy. Because I expect to find it most interesting. Oh, you poor beggar. I can't offer you anything but my company. Madigan! Mac, no, you're sleeping out here. What's wrong with the bunkhouse? Well, it's too crowded and I can't stand snoring, so I'll just take this barn and a little nest of hay. Major Wilson tells me that you've killed quite a few people with your dynamiting. Uh, not that I know of. Not that you know of. Well, now, I call that pretty careless. It's the way of the work. Well, you stay away from that kind of work while you're around here. And here's fair warning. If anyone gets killed on this spread, it better be you. We're going to have an early breakfast. We'll get the wagon and go on to the stock and pick up the things you need. Oh, you do mean to tame him. Civilize him. Make him hunt coyotes instead of lambs and chickens. Oh, fine. And as everyone knows, he'll be much better than any of your traps and your rifles. He'll be much more useful trained than he is now. You take my advice, you stay away from those talons. Good night. And good night to you, sir.
useful. Not what you are. Oh, stop hating the man. Think how fortunate you are. A home to come to. Warm and dry. He'll feed you only the best. And he'll nurse you and hatch you and proclaim to the world how clever you are. How obedient. And what does he ask in return, this kind and generous man? Only that you take a master. That is such a small thing, you foolish bird. Take a master. Quite a beauty, ain't you? Mm -hmm. Breakfast will be in ten minutes. Well, do I have to wait for him? Or is there room enough on the stump for the both of us? Won the first battle. For hunger is a precious weapon, and it costs nothing at all. Lie, you sparrow! What do you think you're doing? Easy. Easy. That's it. that bird fly off with that hood on him, blinding him, and you'll starve to death. Why don't you come down out of the sky and start using your head? What? <sighs> I'd change the habit of a lifetime. Oh, we'll have at it yet. It was written before we were born. <laughs> you fellas must be fixing to blow up the whole valley. <laughs> that would be against the law. Ah, oh, the times I would have become a church goer for a little bit of this stuff. Oh, I'm sure you've been able to improvise quite effectively, sir. Thank you, sir. And such an expert hardly needs me to help him measure fuels and count blasting caps. So if you'll excuse me, I have a bit of business. <laughs> your business, do you? Here you are, sir. Oh, yeah. Let's see. British... British Embassy. Hey, reckon this town's getting important, huh? Let's uh, see, uh, Hubert Wilson Major Rhett. What's Rhett? It means retired. Oh, yeah, sure. It, uh, uh, well, that'll be two dollars. There's uh, pencil and paper right over there, Mr. Uh, did you... you hear the story about the skin flint who uh, touched off the firecracker before Christmas Eve? Uh, no, wait, wait. What are you doing? And then he walked into the house and told his family that Father Christmas would not be appearing that year. For the truth of the matter was that the dear old gentleman had just been shot. Shot.
I've been to funerals where the hearse moves faster. <laughs> Hang on, boys! Hey, easy! This is dynamite! Well, then don't let it fall! <laughs> Terrible day for the English. <laughs> Clear the way! All right, squid boys, over here. Boys, put it right there. Wet. Not bad. Produces hydrostatic pressure of water on the dynamite cartridge. Dear, dear. You see, when one plans a series of these, the idea of producing a progressively intensified shock wave, one of the dynamite charges fails to go off. The series is broken. Only parts of the interior will collapse, blocking off the parts that are not collapsed. Would I be detecting gas in here? Oh, Lord, considerable it is. Better break it off, boys. We'll clear it. Continue tomorrow. Now, what's the blather you're feeding the poor man? The charges I place go off. In wet boreholes? even under wet bridges. A few gentlemen will excuse me. I have a ranch to run. You'll have to carry your little war on by yourself. You are the man I thought you were. Did you have doubts, indeed? You showed none in the telegram. A telegram? There. You think I sleep with an Englishman aware of me naked throat? Impudent. I can understand how you acquire those scars on your back. Scars? Hey, those are me medals! Oh, you Englishman. You don't see the humor in it, do you? I say medals. And you think, why not? It is where a slave would be wearing them on his back. Well, Patrick Madigan is no slave. My father and his father before him, they were your Irish footboys. They were your Irish slaves, not I. I never bent but to pick up a cobblestone. And when the redcoats rode in to burn our village, reprisal it was called, one of them came at me on a horse so tall, charging at a small lad with a stone in his hand. A traitor with a stone in his hand. And in the flat of that sword coming down on the lad's back, like a whip, a whip, till I lay in the mud and could not scream of the mud in my mouth. May my brain rot if I forget it. If I forget the salt tears of my mother burning in the wounds as she kissed them. Oh, what you've done to my land. What you do to us each black day. And do you think a million Patrick Madigans will not fight you if it means a million will die? Will we not blast your bridges and bomb your courts and kill your soldiers and spit into your hearts until we shake the roof tree of your world? Till out of fear and nothing else you grant us our freedom. Freedom to do what? To break any law just as the thought comes to you? Destroy property, play with men's lives. A wagon loaded with dynamite. Just because you think that's what it means to be free. I came at you. Obviously. And the four men on that wagon. Did you think it right in the name of freedom to imperil their lives? I've seen men like you in the army. Violent, irresponsible, undisciplined. You're a man who must be ruled. And that's your answer, is it? To all the blood and the weeping and the ache in the heart of us. I'm not your judge. You'll have your day in court. My only duty is to send this telegram. You'll send nothing. 
and you'll say nothing. Stand aside. Now here's an Englishman without a whip, with not one soldier at the sight of him. And here's Patrick Madigan, who bombed Clerkenwell Prison and Kilmainham Jail, and never felt the face of an Englishman against the back of his hand. <laughs> the same, Mr. Madigan. You'd do better to change your dream. You see that was, huh? You know what the trouble with you is? You just don't know. Too used to being up on that mountain top, aren't you? Yeah. His master's voice. Did you just get in? Well, it was a slow ride in the dark and alone. You and the major still at odds? Well, not anymore. Good. The man came to the mine to see him, a stranger. They spoke a while and uh, then rode off together. Where? They neglected to confide in me. A stranger, what do you look like? Oh, two legs, two arms, a head. I was not close. Keep your hands off that bird. Well, he's yours. Now you're getting the hang of it. Wish I knew what happened to Wilson. Didn't say anything to you, huh? A few things about my being uncivilized. And I believe I mentioned tyranny to him. Nothing about staying in town. Fed wasn't slept in last night. Maybe the man's leading a secret life. Wish you had a better look at that stranger. Well, it's this trouble with my tongue. It's so long it is, it steals the strength from my eyes. Mac off to in such a hurry. He's going to get the sheriff, Nick. It's Wilson's horse. A sheep herder found him near the mine. Wilson, too. He's dead, Nick. Probably was an accident. He could have been thrown from his horse. On the other hand, it could have been... Could have been a stranger. Maybe. This was found on him. It's a copy of the telegram that Wilson was sending to the British Embassy. Madigan. Now, there's no proof of that yet. Well, it was Madigan. It's all my fault. Where do you think you're going? Just take one guess. And what will you do, Nick? Go out in hog time and bring him in? Just have some $2 lawyer cut him loose? Or maybe you'd like to string him up by his thumbs till he says exactly what you want him Yes, to. I just might do that. And that would be exactly wrong. Now, I say we play for time. We 
You simply say that the Major was killed in a riding accident. Now, that'll give the Sheriff and us time to check around. If there was a stranger, believe me, he left a trace somewhere. Mm. Meanwhile, what about Madigan? He's staying with us. He has to feel safe. And he could be innocent, you know. <laughs> Just be sure you keep a watch on that hair trigger of yours, Nick. Now, the Major was a good man and a good friend, but we don't want blood for blood. All we want is the one who did it. This trap ain't waiting for a little dynamite. Let's go. All right, get along, lads. I'll be right with you. It's all there in your eyes. You caught another eagle. Just keep your hands right where I can see them. We found the Major dead. Now, now, think a minute. It was not murder. And I can see that's what you're thinking. That's exactly what I'm thinking, and so's the sheriff by this time. Now, are you going to come peaceable, or you want me to drag you out of here? Barkley, your way is a persuasion. But Patrick Madigan is an eagle of another sort. And it's my home I prefer to go to, and not any other. What are you doing, Arthur? the boss. Well, he's still in there. I'm... Dead? Well, if not, it's an ugly way to be going. Get the picks and shovels. Let's well, go. The shovel's not in a hundred years. But dig, man, for what good it'll do. Come on, with the shovels.
that? He's still alive. Keep digging. You went for help. I got all the help I need right here. All right, boys, take cover. Running. Do you want me to stop now and debate the foolish sentimentality of Patrick Madigan? Why worry any more about me than Wilson? Barkley, I could never stand by and let an animal be caged or a human being suffer in darkness. They were trapped here without even a window to watch a flight of birds. And that's worse than any prison I ever occupied and hated. Uh, this maudlin talk is only tolerable with a tank and a three of beer, so let's get out of here. I've developed a savage thirst. Uh, now listen, Madigan, you listen. Uh, oh, I thought I'd humble myself, but all right, I'll carry it. Suppose you tell us what happened. You'd never believe it. Try us. Patrick Madigan is not going to hang or be put in a cage. Oh. 
Feels like. I kind of know how it feels. 